Hey guys, welcome to Friday Coffee Mornings with 170 out. I, that's what I'm calling it today anyway. I might change it next week, you know me. Hope you guys have had a good week. I've had a stonking week. I've actually had a, one of the best weeks that I've had for a very, very long time. Uh, so much good stuff has happened uh, in my personal life. Work's been the stressy mess hellhole that it has been, but... You know, that's work, nothing I can do about that. But let's start, ooh, where do I start? Just give you an update. Let's, let's, let's start with what happened last night. So last night I was streaming uh, Life is Strange Paul Storm, which was very, very fun. Uh, dealt with some pretty hard sort of issues, uh, particularly regarding like, you know, grief and uh, teenage angst and being a step parent and all that, the, the, the relation to those sides of things. Uh, but literally like two minutes before I started streaming, I got an email from Twitch um, inviting me to the Twitch affiliate program, which made me very, very happy to the extent that I was going, Sarah, you've got to come in and read this email. Because um, it's something I have been working towards, something I've wanted for a little while. Um, and yeah, but it's kind of once sort of the euphoria and everything comes down, it's sort of an, you know, a very odd feeling because when they first announced the affiliate program uh, and the requirements for it, I, I got very, very obsessed. And when I wasn't meeting the requirements and I wasn't getting, you know, people weren't coming into the stream, uh, I was getting very, very down. And, you know, in the end, sort of Sarah had to sort of pull me to one side and sort of say, look, you know, remember why you stream and so it's something that's been whilst it's been in the back of my mind or something that i've wanted it's not something i've been like I, I'm, I'm gonna focus all my attention uh on getting it uh but yeah so to, to finally get that was was topped off a very very good week but um i've got to give huge huge thanks to you guys because whilst yeah i you know people say i've put in a lot of effort and a lot of time and that is true i you, I can't do this without you guys. You know, the requirements, some of the requirements are like, you know, a certain number of follows, you know, a certain number of concurrent viewers over, over 30 days. And you know, that's the support side. That's the side that you, you guys do that have, you know, that have, have allowed me to get to this stage. So this is very much your affiliate as much as is mine, possibly even more so, because, you know, you guys, you, you know, you guys, when you put it out on social media that I've gone live, or, you know, you, when you're talking about your favorite streamers, you, you know, you, my, my name is, you, you bring my name into the conversation, all that is support, and all that is amazing, and I cannot thank you enough, and I've got to give a huge, particularly huge shout out to Weird Laughing Maniac, aka Noe, because every time she streams, and I'm, cause I'm, I'm a mod on live on stream, so I pop my head in every now and again, and anytime I pop my head in, she's can't see, she's telling her viewers, you know, go, go and see one seventy out, go and watch his Twitch streams, go and watch his DJ streams, you know, he's a good, great guy, you know. That amount of support has just been so phenomenal, and I've had quite a few people uh, come from her streams, um, and also, I want to say a huge thanks to the the mentor guy, the men, the mentors at, at Streamers Connected. They've been coming in, giving me feedback on my streams, on how I can improve things, and and putting those things in place as well. It has sort of has been really, really useful. And is, again, is is what has led to this point. So, um, I've obviously now got a bit more work to go and do now because I've got to go and sort uh, a load of forms out regarding tax so I can get the sub button and get the bit button. Um, and I've got to find someone to design an emote for me now. Uh, so I've got all those things to do. But you know, affiliate is a great to have. It really is. And I'm hoping that it's the start of something. And I'm hoping that I can push on and it may lead to other things as well now. But it's not the be all and end all. Um, it's not like I've achieved, it's not like I've, yeah, yeah, I've finally made it as a streamer. Or I'm suddenly, you know, better than, than people who don't have the affiliate. Uh, because I'm not. That's ultimately the end. And that's, you know, that for me is 
probably the most important thing to take away from last night's news. He's like, okay, yeah, you you, you now have the like the title of Twitch affiliate, for official Twitch affiliate. But it's like, yeah, okay, but I'm no I'm no better than I was before I got that, and I'm gonna be, you know, I'm certainly no better than anybody else. I do this because it's fun. I want to continue doing what I'm doing. I want to continue raiding other streams. I want to continue. Um, you know, retweeting other people's streams when they go live and, and help them get, you know, into affiliate if they're, they're working towards it. But yeah, I'm very, very happy. Um, so that was the biggest bit of news. Insomnia 61 was freaking amazing. I was there, I um, managed to pace myself really, really well and get my anxiety under control. So I was able to spend uh, a few hours uh, with people. Got to meet a lot, a lot of good people. Uh, did that's my first bit of proper networking. So I got chatting to a guy who runs another um, another event uh, about the possibility of doing a live DJ set at the party that they run, which would be really, really cool if that comes off. Might not, but it's like okay, cool. You know, so, you know, and thanks to Sib for being by me uh, whilst I did that because I would have been too nervous to go and do that on my own. So. That was cool, but I got to catch up with a lot of streamers, connected guys. I got to ca I got to meet Charlie V, which was really, really cool. Really nice streamer, uh, Pop John as well. Brilliant, brilliant guy. Uh, Nick, uh, Zonda, Josh. Just so many great, great people I got to meet, and I just sort of hung out. I didn't really play many games whilst I was there. In fact, I don't think I played any games whilst I was there. I tried to play Project Cars 2 and then sort of very quickly realized that I don't like the PlayStation 4 controller. Um, very much more comfortable with an Xbox, so. But the game itself looked pretty solid, looked pretty cool. Um, but with Forza coming out at the end of the month, I'm not likely to pick Project Cars 2 up anytime soon. I picked up Project Cars in the games with gold. Uh, I haven't played it, and I don't know if I ever will get around to playing it, so. What else has been happening? Oh, yeah, F1 2017 has been a really, really good game. Really, really fun. They've taken, by and large, taken what works from 2016 and sort of added a few bits and pieces. Uh, there's been a few issues. There's been a few, gra you know, a few graphical issues, a few technical issues, and you're like, yeah, what, what, you know. It just sort of, they do say to take the edge off the game. Um, which brings me to something I'm going to very, very, very quickly talk about. Is that, um, I was looking at it for the patch notes and then very stupidly decided to go further into the forum. And yeah, that was a mistake. Let people scream in, saying Codemasters are incompetent, this game's clearly in beta. Uh, you know, how can you possibly release it into like a you know, horrendous state it is? And I'm literally sat there thinking, am I just like the luckiest gamer in the world when it comes to this sort of thing? Because I saw virtually identical comments made about MCC. I made virtually saw virtually identical comments about Halo Five. You go onto any forum for any game with on the first couple of days of release, and you're gonna see pretty much virtually identical comments. People saying it's broke, it's in beta, this should never have been. You know, now that'd be fair. You know, three four three put their hands up with Master Chief Collection and said, yeah, that it was in a bad way, and I did experience a lot of issues. But again, I didn't experience anywhere near what a lot of people were reporting. I didn't experience the issues. With F1 2017, that people are sort of getting, and certainly not maybe to the extent that I would consider them you know, game breaking. You know, it's like this game, you know, saying, you know, that makes it unplayable. Yeah, there were issues. But maybe I, but I think sort of part of it as well is I've worked for technical support teams for IT sort of related companies for going on 15 years now. And whilst I don't work in the development and QA side of things, I've got um you know to know how that sort of works and i'm um, like i know just purely from releasing a piece of software that you can have the re most most robust qa testing in the world a customer is gonna find something that you've missed it's inevitable because i don't think you can test absolutely every single minor thing um now, when you factor in PCs, you're gonna have different setups. You can't have every single possible setup that's out there. And it also depends on when you did your testing. 
Uh, now I know that with gaming, you know, making a game is exceedingly complicated. There are so many things that can possibly go wrong. And these guys are coding literally right up to the day that they go gold when, you know, the game is like yet yeah, ready and it's got to be delivered to be pressed into onto discs basically to for, for, for the physical copies. Um, and it could be the very last thing that goes in before it was pressed impacts something else. That can happen. What we know. You know, and that that's that that's the nature of software development. That's the nature of technology, unfortunately. You know, now, I'm not saying we should just brush all the bugs under the carpet. I'm not saying we should be, you know, we should ex just accept a, a bug-ridden game. What I am saying is perhaps we as gamers might need to be a little bit, you know, sort of take a step back a little bit. And so don't you mean to go, oh, I've paid my money for this, this should be working exactly. It's like, okay, but just sort of think about it, think about it for a second, you know. I maybe, you know, maybe I don't get the number of bugs that many people do because I just go into career mode, I go into the single player stuff, so everything is sort of by and large contained within the game. You then go into multiplayer, you're then adding your network connectivity, you've got servers, you've got times by, you know, however many people are connecting. That, you know, you're not this again. You don't really know how you. Sometimes, very often, you just don't know how exactly how your product's going to do it until it hits the hand of the consumer. And the games are massive, massively complicated. You know, go and watch. Hey, the three four three sprint series that they did on 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 Halo Five. Regardless of what you think about that game, it gives a real, really good insight into the making of a game of how complicated it is to make a game. You know, go and watch No Clip. Daniel Dwyer's no clip stuff. He's done some series on Rocket League and Doom and other this very most recently he did Final Fantasy fourteen. And there was really something really, really interesting in that game when he was talking to one of the developers and he was saying, Look, you know, speaking to developers in my own sort of experience, I would say it would take at least five years to make an MMO and the guy he was interviewing said, You just said it would take five years to make an MMO. I want you to stress that part that, you know, there's at least five years to make an MMO. It's an extraordinarily complicated, lengthy process to make a game. Things are going to go wrong. At the end of the day, humans are making it. And humans make mistakes. They try really, really hard. I've got no, I do not doubt the devs' passion for this. I do not doubt the devs' desire to make a, a really, really good working game. But sometimes things happen. They don't intend them to happen. They don't. They don't plan. They're not like we're going to deliberately make this bug happen, you know. And coming back to the whole QA thing, it just popped in my mind. What's really, really hilarious to me is that people who haven't put two and two together. If you look on the forum, you've got one person going, "I'm getting all these issues," and another person's going, "Well, I'm not getting them." And it doesn't actually occur to anybody that perhaps the reason why a particular bug got through QA is because when QA were testing that, it didn't happen. QA can't raise defects and bugs with the development guys if they don't experience them. Nature of software, nature of technology. Something, you know, e even with a console that's supposed to be pretty freaking standard. It's kind of one of the selling points of a console. It's not like a PC where you've got so many things and you've got to upgrade it. The console is like, here's what it is, what's in it. The games we release will work on that console and the consoles are supposed to be by and large the same. Well, clearly they're not because I can play one aspect of a game and get zero issues, and another person can play the same aspect of the game and get loads of issues. Now, perhaps the issues are less with the game and more with your setup, perhaps. But that's you know for you know, whatever reason that's not something that go immediately goes through somebody's mind. So, I mean, and then there's a the whole thing about what is kind of constitutes unplayable. One, one guy was saying that, you know, he was seeing the screen tearing and blurry textures, and he was saying, that for me, make, that makes the game unplayable. I can't stand that. That shouldn't be happening in, in, in next gen consoles. And I'm, I literally was laughing because I'm like, yeah, I've seen screen tearing. I've seen, you know, blurry textures. And because I've been streaming the game, they've been there for everyone to see. 
hasn't affected my enjoyment of the game one bit. And it's like, oh, that happened. Cool, right, game, game, oh yeah, game plays. You know, I've had, I've had issues with, you know, AI overtaking me under safety car, but not me, it would do the same back, and me, you know, qualifying in one position and then starting the race in another. Is it annoying? Yeah. Should it be in the game? No. Uh, are the devs going to probably fix it? Yeah. Does that make it a broken game that's nothing more than a beta? No. No, not at all. I think people might need to go and relearn the definition of what beta is. Or possibly relearn the definition of what a release version is. It's not like movies. You know? In movies, everything is contained and you know you're just watching it when you add interactivity to something the difficulty of everything and what can go wrong increases by about a million fold you know so I said perhaps sometimes as gamers and perhaps maybe it's just people generally a little bit more empathy towards the amount of work you know and again I'm just going to reiterate I'm not saying we don't we sweep the bugs under the carpet I'm not saying we don't raise the defects as and when they occur but what I am saying is that perhaps we might just take a breath before we start launching attacks on developers by you know, saying they're incompetent and saying that they've released a broken game because perhaps is that the reason why a certain bug hasn't been caught is because they never experienced it during testing and you know Except the fact that these guys are very passionate people. They want to make good games. They want to, their games to be working. Um, but sometimes things happen beyond their control. So, anyway, that's it from me. Uh, as I said last week, there's no stream this weekend because um, Sarah and I are spending the weekend together. I will be back Monday with uh, definitely, definitely Bayonetta. Uh, may do some Formula 1 depending on what time I finish streaming or whether I get Bayonetta done. Tuesday will be probably be a little bit of Formula 1 online. Going to see if the multiplayer, you know, going to play the multiplayer. I'm going to see if I have these issues that, that these people have raised, other people have raised. So hopefully that component will work. If not, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I have a plan B on, on what I'm going to play. Um... I don't know if there's any Telltale Games episodes released Tuesday. I will double check because uh, if there are, then I'll play that. Then I'll do F1. Otherwise, I'll just be F1. Uh, and Sunday, I don't know. That's week down the line. I've got a rough idea what I'm going to play, but I'll probably think about it any other time. Anyway, you go enjoy your Friday and your weekend, whatever you are doing. I am going to carry on drinking a cup of coffee and upload this video and then have a look at my work schedule because i have a feeling i may have a lot of work to do today uh anyway you guys have been awesome as always thank you so much for your support as i said i hope i can keep providing stuff for you and i'm gonna go and do all the stuff i need to do so cheers <laughs>